All right, here we go, Wax TV, and we are back here again with another video. Hope everyone is enjoying the playoffs. Uh, my Dodgers are have just uh, gone underway, and um, man, just hoping we can get to the World Series and this time win it. So what I have today is a mail day, and it's 20 slabs, and it's mostly early modern to vintage and uh, just about every card is a value buy and uh, I'll share the prices on uh, most of these orders and then at the end of the video I'm gonna also uh, share a, a quick goal that I have uh, as far as my collection goes moving forward so the first one uh, in this mail day is the 1991 tops major league debut Luis Gonzalez Gonzalez this is a near mint to mint eight and I think I paid something like a dollar ninety-five with this, and I'm, I'm the, the shipping might have even been free. The person I'm sure uh, lost money on this. Uh, was probably expecting, uh, you know, for it to be bid up just a little bit, but I was the only one to bid on it, and I was happy to win it. And uh, the next one is the 1988 Tops traded Robin Ventura. And uh, this one is a near mint to mint eight, and uh, just another cool card, uh, cool card from my childhood. Robin Ventura, awesome player uh, throughout the '90s, one of my favorites growing up. And I just just couldn't pass on the deal that I got for this card. This card, I believe, was another two dollar buy. And then next up, and and I, it's funny I didn't coincidentally place them in this order. It just happened to work out that way. But it is the 1991 tops nolan ryan and this one is in a mint nine I actually got this card in a lot with the next card i'm going to show you and i believe i paid ten dollars for the lot and the person was even nice enough to throw some extra stuff in there as well so i'm going to put that right next to robin ventura as the old joke goes uh robin ventura is the only person to get seven hits off of nolan ryan in a game Three to the head and two and uh, four to the face. All right, that was dumb. Okay, uh, eighty-eight tops. Nolan Ryan near mint to mint eight. And uh, man, this card looks good. You know, we wanna we wanna uh, purchase the card and not the grade, as we hear so many times in this hobby. Uh, but you know what? For an eight, this one looks good. Put that one right there. Just move these over a little bit. Okay, next one up is the 1989 Topps Tiffany Bo Jackson in a Mint 9. I won this card at, at I believe it was $4. Awesome card. I believe everybody should have at least one Topps Tiffany Bo Jackson card in their collection. Next up is the 1987 Donruss uh, Mark McGuire rated rookie card near, what's that, a near mint seven. Uh, I actually got this one in a lot with the next card, and I won this lot for $5. And that card is the 1987 Donruss Rafael Palmero in the near mint to mint eight. $5 lot for two key rookies from the 80s. Can't beat that. Uh, you know, very um, notorious players, um, controversial to say the least, but you know what? Still some of my favorites as a kid, and I'm going to keep on collecting what I like. 87 Tops Tiffany, Ozzy Smith All-Star, and this one is in a near mint to mint eight. Pretty sweet. 1987 tops traded Matt Williams in a mint nine. And this is a, to me, this is a key rookie, huge rookie uh, from the eighties. I mean, he, if, if it wasn't for the strike, we might be talking about Matt Williams uh, breaking the home run record rather than Bonds and McGuire and Sosa and all them to legitimately break it. But still just a sweet card. And I won this one for about, I think it was something like $4 and 50 cents shipped. Next up is the 1988 Fleer Update, 
Roberto Alomar, rookie card, near mint to mint eight. Another key rookie from the 80s, Roberto Alomar, just a awesome player. One of the greatest second basemen to ever play the game. Next up is our 1987 Fleer, Barry Larkin, rookie card, near mint to mint eight. Uh, Hall of Famer, sweet card. I remember I got this one. Uh, I believe I paid $6 for this one. Might have paid some shipping on it, but hey, again, key Hall of Fame rookie from the 80s. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, next up is the 1987 Fleer Bo Jackson rookie card in a mint nine. I paid $10 for this one, and this one looks immaculate. Um, I, I, I can't seem to fathom how this one got a nine maybe some back chipping but other than that man this one is centered beautifully and next up is um a card that's uh been gaining some popularity over the past uh year or so this is the 1990 tops ken griffey jr uh tops all-star rookie cup card this one um i paid a you know it wasn't that great of a of a deal but i paid 12 dollars for this one and mint nines are going for about 20 right now so i still got a good deal on that um yeah just be on the lookout for this card if you could get one in a 10 they're in the upwards of 100 dollars uh but still yeah uh, sh there's nothing wrong with this nine beautifully centered next two cards i got these two in a lot as well um 89 tops traded ken griffey jr this one is in a near mint to mint eight and i got that along with this 1988 uh, sorry 89 score traded ken griffey jr these are both um tops traded and score traded both uh, supplemental sets got them both for 9.99 and i believe i paid three dollars shipping so still these are all value buys of awesome players hall of fame players at that Next up is the 1981 Tops Nolan Ryan in a near mint to mint seven. Sweet card. I think I paid about six dollars ship for this one. Uh, just an awesome card from an awesome player. Love that photo. Love the throwback uh, Houston Astros jersey. Uh, next one, I can't believe how cheap I got this one. This might not be a big card to most, but uh, to me, it has some slight sentimental value. That's the 1976 Tops Dave Johnson. This one is in a near mint to mint seven, and the card looks beautiful. It looks great. I just love the color scheme they have going on there, the facsimile signature. Um, it's, just, it's just a nice card. Slightly, you know, it's off centered on the back from left to right, but the front looks great. 75 was a great year. For, uh, for tops and you know I say I say sentimental value only because uh, Dave Johnson uh, well I was the manager of my Los Angeles Dodgers for a short while so you know I have a like, slight connection uh, with this card but um, yeah this card was it was something like I think it was nine dollars shipped can't go wrong with a for a you know a nice vintage card of a pretty decent player and a good manager uh, next up, now this one is, man, my favorite card in the order. And I can't believe how cheap I got this one for. This is the 1961 Tops Dodger Southpaws, Sandy Koufax, and Johnny Padres. This is in a very good three. And I am completely all right with that. This, I mean, to me, this is what a 1961 baseball card should look like. Um, got some history on the back about two of these, um, awesome players. Uh, just, just an amazing card that's going to be in my collection, uh, for a long time. This, this to me is what a Leco 3 would call a casket card because, uh, for the amount of, that I paid for this, which was about, I think I paid a uh, $5.99 shipped. I mean, you can't beat that for a vintage card. Uh, of, of two awesome players, Sandy Koufax at that. Classic card. Love it. And uh, next up, and I said I would be sharing a goal towards the end of this video. And um has a lot to do with this card right here. 
This is a 1951 Bowman Fred Sanford, and this card is in a very good to excellent four. I paid uh, $13 for this shipped. Now, I know Fred Sanford is not the biggest name, but, you know, there's some history on the back of here. Uh, just reading, you know, his a little bit of uh, his struggles through the through the Mid-Atlantic League and then actually making it up to the show with the Yankees. Uh, he went he went through uh, he went through a lot. Looks like he was born in 1919 in Salt Lake City, Utah. And uh, just a cool card. I love the artwork. I love the detail. And from a, a team like the Yankees, which is high in demand, and the fact that these cards were painted, just the detail is so amazing. The the green background, the dirt that he's standing on, even the random player out there in the outfield. Such a cool card for $13 that I paid for it. Now, my goal moving forward is to build up my vintage. I have a, a lot of current, a lot of modern, a lot of junk wax, but... um. My goal moving forward is to purchase at least one card from the 50s or earlier each month. And this is my first one right here. This is the oldest card in my collection. And I'm going to keep on uh, purchasing more. So this is card. This is the first of many, many uh, vintage 1959 or earlier uh, that I will be sharing with you guys in the future. And the last card of this mail day is the biggest card in this order and probably the biggest card i own in my collection biggest card i've ever had and i mean that literally and i might have to back up my uh, tripod here a little bit that is the 1964 tops giants al k line and this is in a very good to excellent four yeah i i, I won this card at auction for seven dollars can't beat that for a hall of famer like Al K line, such a cool card. Um, have somewhat of like a, it's kind of like a newspaper clipping on the back. K line wins the AL batting title. Um, man, part of part of me wants to snap this out and uh, send it to him, have him sign it. He's a huge TTMer, and just and have it re slabbed as authentic. But um, yeah, this is just a cool card, cool card, and um, yeah. Just with that being said, I'm looking to build up my vintage. Uh, if there's anybody out there that may have some tips as far as building vintage goals, drop me a comment. Uh, and uh, let, yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about the hobby. This is why I started this channel. I want to hear your feedback. So until then, this has been Wax TV. We are out.